All right, welcome everybody. We're going to begin chapter two. And within chapter two, well, for this video, we'll just do 2.1. But um, I'll do a little intro and we'll go through with the lesson, right? So in chapter two, uh, we present methods that focus on organizing and summarizing the data and using graphs that enable us to understand important characteristics of data. Let's imagine that we wanted to gather data on how long it took for customers at McDonald's to order their food during its drive throughs here is a data collected by F Professor Farhad Kajari. He was sitting outside of McDonald's for the past few days collecting data to present to his College Now Math 132 statistics course. So I grabbed my binoculars and I was outside of McDonald's for a few days and a few hours. Um, and I was just recording how long it took people to get their food at a McDonald's drive through right? And by the way, I'm completely joking. I just made up these numbers. I did not have my binoculars. I'm not that crazy. But let's just imagine uh, we have, I think this is a 50 data values, but let's say for one group of people or one person, it took 107 seconds to get their food. The next person, it took 139 seconds and then 197, so on. And the idea is for this chapter, we're gonna focus on organizing and summarizing data. So here, let's just say we have some scenario where we're at McDonald's, right? And here are how long it takes for people to get their food. So for the first question to start us off, just to get the ball rolling within the chapter, uh, what kind of questions are you thinking about when you observe this data, right? What I want you to do is pause the video and just give whatever your gut tells you, whatever your heart tells you, right? So for me, I was thinking, um, when was this data gathered? Was it in the morning? Was it at night? Um, was this data gathered during or before the pandemic? I mean, there are so many questions that you can get from, right? What I'd like you to do is try and write your own. But this is something that I was thinking about. Let's look at the next question here. What information can you gather from this data, right? So imagine, so we know the scenario, right? We're outside McDonald's. What can you infer from the times that were given here? Okay, so pause the video and try and go for it. And now if you're back, um, all I thought was each drive through was somewhat between one to five minutes, right? So there was one with 83 seconds. So that's over a minute. And there was one with like 300 seconds. Um, yeah, right over here. So that's about five minutes, right? So that's what I could get from this data. Let's look at the third part here. If I was the owner of a fast food chain, why would this kind of data be important? So again, pause the video, try and what do you think, right? Why, if, if you owned this McDonald's, why would this data be important to you? Or how can it be important, right? Um, how fast are my customers receiving their food? Are they satisfied? How can we um, improve the quality of the drive through right? Can, how can we generate more money? So, okay, let's move on. For the next part over here, question number four. Oh, this I wanted to cover up. Here, let's say you worked at, in the data analysis department of a big company fast food chain. How would you feel would be the most efficient way of organizing this data? So if we had this data over here, right? It doesn't look very enticing. We just have a bunch of numbers. Is there a way where we could take this data and express it in a nice and pleasant way? Um, what would you do or what have you learned? The pie chart, a histogram, a dot plot, etc. If you're not familiar with these types of ways of organizing and expressing data, this is what chapter 2.1 will be about. We're going to be talking about basic forms of presenting data, right? And for the last part, how would you be able to explain and present this data in a friendly way that would capture someone's interest right away? Well, I guess we're going to have to learn all the possible ways. Okay, so to start off with the first way, um, a frequency distribution shows how data are partitioned among se several categories or classes by listing categories along with the number of frequencies of data values in each of them. So for the previous example, let's say if we had to actually go through a frequency distribution, let's take a look at the first data value, 107, right? Notice that we could tick off 107 over here 
and this would count within this class. Okay, then 139, where does it go? Okay, it goes between 125 and 174. 197, where does it go? Okay, it goes here. And then after I gather data, I usually cross it out. What I'd like you to do is, before continuing, organize this data, right? Fill in the frequency distribution, and we'll go through with the aspects and definitions of it, okay? So pause the video and try and, you know, go through each one of this. It should take you a few minutes, right? Okay. Um, all right, so let's say if you actually completed it, um, it should look something like this. Um, it should be 11, 24, 10, 3, and 2. Okay, that should be the data values over here. So I'll write that over here. Uh, 11, 24, 10, 3, and 2. And if you had the tick marks over here, then you could just write the numbers over here, right? So 11, 24, 10, 3, and 2. And this should be what? Uh, 25, 35, I'm sorry, 35, 45, these are 50 data values, right? So we have a total of 50. Okay, easy peasy. So for the next part, uh, just some basic definitions within a frequency distribution that are good to have in your notes are right over here. So we have the lower limit, the upper limit, the class boundaries, the class midpoints, and the class width. So what I'd like you to do is here, I have the definitions for them. Just take a second and copy them down into your notes. Let me get a better angle, okay? So here's a definition here. You could pause here, here, the class boundaries, the class midpoints, and the class width, right? Uh, they're right here, okay? So pause the video and try and, or rewind, try and copy it down into your notes. So now, let's say you have it in your notes, right? Let's just go over them. So the lower class limits, right, are the smallest numbers that can belong to each of the different classes. So notice that what are the lower class limits over here? It's the 75, 125, 175, 225, and 275, right? Upper class limits respectively would be the 124, the 174, 224, et cetera. The boundaries separate the class width, okay? So notice that this, really not the most important thing, but notice between, you see this 124.5, because we don't have 124.5, but what this number does over here is, it separates this integer from this integer. And that's what the class boundaries represent. The midpoints represent what is in between of these widths. So notice that, What's between 75 and 124, it's 99.5. What's between the 125 and 174, it's this 149.5. And that represents the class midpoint. The class width is just the difference between two consecutive lower class limits or upper class limits. So the idea is what would be the class width over here? Notice what's the difference between 75 and 125, it's uh, 50. And notice what's the difference between the 125 and the 175, it's also 50. And within a frequency distribution, you always will have the same class width, okay? So your data is nice and organized. Okie dokie. So that is it for this part of the definition. Let us turn the page over here to this part. And this video is, I'm gonna keep it short. I think I'll just go through this page and then that's it. But the idea for this section over here, let me zoom in. Okay, this one's not too bad. So here, we have a relative frequency distribution. So notice in, in the previous example, with a frequency distribution, we actually tallied off and had, okay, we had 11 between 75 and 124. We had 24 between 125 and 174. The idea with the relative frequency is, here we could represent this, instead of having 11, we could just have 11 over 50, which is 22%. And I will explain this in a second. The idea is you're representing the data values 
or the amount of frequency as a percent okay so notice in the previous example we had 11 right so how do you actually get what percentage of the of the times were between 75 and 124 well, it, was, it was 11 out of the total 50 if you counted all your frequency values it was 50 so here notice that we had 11 over 50 which is 22 percent what about for the next one we had 24 over here so this is 24 over 50 which is 48 percent okay so this is 48 percent over here what about for the next one this was 10 so we'll have uh, put it over here 10 over 50 which is uh, 20 percent right so this is 20 percent here this was three so this is six percent and this was two which is four percent okay and that's the general idea of a relative frequency you're just organizing your data instead of and frequency tally marks you're just representing it as a percent value that is it for a cumulative frequency distribution the idea for this one um, We'll read the definition. So it says another variation of frequency distribution is the cumulative frequency distribution in which the frequency for each class is the sum of the frequencies for that class and all previous classes. Okay, so pause the video and uh, you know reread this sentence. But generally, the idea of what this is saying is that if we had eleven. Right? We had 11 between 75 and 124. What is a cumulative frequency distribution? It's telling us to add the previous sum of all of the previous classes. So notice that here, notice how many did we have between 125 and 174? We have 24. So the idea is we're just gonna do 11 plus 24, which is 35. Notice how many do we have between the 175 and 224? We have 10. So what are we gonna do here? We're gonna do 35 plus 10, which is 45. And so on and so on. What do we have from 225 to 274? There were three, so this is 48. And then we finish off with 50. And that's the idea of a cumulative frequency distribution. It just organizes the data where you're adding the previous classes. All right, um, do I want to continue more? No, I don't. All right, this will be, this was pretty 2.1, uh, short and sweet, right? We just talked about the idea that, I'm sorry, let me get this real quick. For 2.1, the general idea is, or chapter two is how can we organize and summarize data? So just to recap, the first way we learned was through a frequency distribution, second way was through a relative frequency, third way was a cumulative frequency, and in this chapter two we're going to learn all possible ways. Well, yeah, most of the good ways. So for chapter 2.2 we're going to talk about a histogram and what does that mean. And 2.3 we'll talk about other ways of presenting data. So I will have that in the next video. Um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next section.